Chris Leverdine and today I'm going to show you how I've crocheted this American flag inspired crochet top. And as a disclaimer, I'm actually filming this tutorial using my iPhone because I don't have a camera right now, but I'm going to try my best to teach you how I made this. I believe this is rather beginner friendly. You're going to need red, white, and blue yarn. It doesn't matter which one you choose, whatever you want. Mine is size 4 yarn and I'm using a size 5 millimeter hook. The first thing you're going to do is create a slip knot and then chain a chain long enough to wrap around your torso basically from one side of your rib cage to the next wherever you want your top to cover you and after you have created that chain you're going to go back on that chain using a single crochet and a single crochet again is through the stitch yarn over back through the stitch yarn over and through the last two loops and if you are a complete beginner to crochet I do have a crocheting for beginners video that I will link in the description box below along with the answers to all your questions so please read the description box below before leaving a question in the comments so after you have single crocheted your way all along that chain at the end of the chain you're going to flip it over then chain one then just go back on that row using a single crochet again and you're just going to continue with that pattern until you're satisfied with how thick your red stripe is I think mine was about five rows and after I was done with those about five rows of single crochet and I was satisfied with how thick the stripe was, I switched to white yarn so I could work on my white stripe. And all I did was attach the white yarn and then just continue on doing the same thing, just single crochet. And then when I get to the end, I chain one, flip it over, and then continue single crocheting. And this is how I attach my yarn. Uh, I think it's called the invisible stitch if I'm doing it right. Not even sure if I'm doing it right, but it worked. Uh, you could go ahead and cut the red yarn and then tie a knot with the white yarn to the red yarn to attach it. It's totally up to you as long as you attach it and it's not going to unravel itself. Then you are fine. Uh, again, so now working with the white yarn, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Crochet an equal amount of rows for the white yarn so it can have an even white stripe to coincide with the red stripe and after I'm done with that I'm going to attach the red and then make an equal amount of rows of red to match the white and so forth until I am satisfied with the coverage and what I have right now it covers my entire rib cage right above my belly button and I want it that length but if you want it even longer then you could just go ahead and keep going just keep putting it against yourself and check how much it covers and then once you're satisfied with its coverage then you're going to focus on making the cups and what I do to make the cups is I put this against myself and then indicate from which stitch to which stitch do I want to make the cup basically and then I only crochet on that area so right here it's like I don't know how far away from the end but this is where my breast is supposed to be when I put this top against myself so I'm going to work only where my breasts are going to be and uh, that's what I'm showing right here so I'm going to just make my cup using this and I'm also going to follow the same uh, pattern of switching colors um, because I'm going to make this cup my striped cup and I'm also going to show you how I make it triangular. So again, only crochet on the area where you're going to make your cup. Just forget about everywhere else on the top, just wherever you want to cover your breasts, only crochet on that part. And once you reach the point where you put it against yourself and it covers half of your breast, then that's when you're going to start making it triangular because until now, you have been chaining one and flipping it over, right? Well, now you're going to stop chaining one at the end and you're actually going to skip over that first stitch and then just continue on uh, like a normal row until you reach the end and then instead of chaining one and flipping it over again you're not going to chain one and then you're going to skip the first stitch and go right into the second stitch and what that's going to do is that's going to pull the project together and create that triangular shape. Now I know I said that this was a beginner friendly project but now I have changed my mind and you need a little bit of experience at least watching my videos in order to do this project because I know I go really fast 
So if you're lost right now, please go ahead and watch uh, one of my videos that I will link down below. Those are my older videos and they are much slower and have better explanations, I think, maybe. Um, hopefully it helps you out. Anyway, um, I'm just going to show you what I do. Um, I've been following this pattern of uh, every time I reach the end of a row, I don't chain one and then I skip the first stitch and that's why my cup is now turning into a triangle instead of staying rectangular like the bottom portion of this top so again I've reached the end I'm going to flip it over not chaining one and then instead of going into that first stitch I'm going to go into that second stitch and I'm just going to show you how I finish it off See, now I only have about like five stitches in this entire row. And once I flip it and then skip a stitch, I'm only going to have four stitches. One, two, okay, I don't know what happened there. But anyway, it just gets smaller and smaller until you're left with only one stitch. And that's when you know that you're done. Yay! So put it against yourself, make sure it fits you. And if not, then you're going to have to go back and try alternating the pattern meaning one row you do the chain one and then you go into all the stitches and then the next row you skip a stitch and you know you don't chain one and then the next row you do a normal row and then the next one that's when you skip the stitch and yeah anyway after you're finished with your cup you're just going to create your strap all you have to do is make a chain of I think I normally chain about 70 or 50 or 70 I don't know it depends um, on the tops of both cups so I could tie it around my neck that's the easiest way to make a strap and after you're done with the first cup you're just going to do the exact same thing to the other side except it's going to be easier because you're just going to use the blue yarn it's just going to be solid blue and remember to make it a triangular shape and then make the strap and then once you're done with that you just go ahead and make some chains on the side of the top to work as your straps and you are done and I actually couldn't film that portion of this tutorial because it's super hard to do it with just your iPhone. So if you are having difficulties trying to figure out how to make your straps, I do have plenty of other tutorials that, that show how to make straps. So you can just go ahead and watch those. And the very last step after you have completed the main portion of the top is the very last detail, which is to create the stars on the blue cup. And that's actually pretty easy, but really hard to explain. What you're going to do is grab a piece of yarn and kind of weave it through where you want your star to be. And um, this is the back of it. Make sure that there's plenty of room or plenty of yarn at the back because you're going to need to tie it. You'll, you'll see in a bit. Okay, so weave it through to the back. And then um, you're just going to make like a little X. So go across a couple stitches and then weave it through the back. It'll be easier when you use your uh, crochet hook. I actually didn't have my crochet hook when I filmed this portion of the tutorial. And again, I'm filming with my phone and that's why I'm all shaky. But um, so yeah, just weave it through, make like a little X. And just experiment with the X's. Um, I just make them four by four so four stitches by four stitches and uh, I, th I think that's a good size but if you want them bigger just you know make it go across more stitches if you want them smaller then make them go across less stitches and um, make sure it's not too tight because then you won't really be able to see the white yarn against the blue it's just going to um, pretty much disappear within the blue and you'd have to look really close to see it you don't want people standing too close to you so, anyway, um, after you have weaved the yarn through and made a little X, making sure that it's not too tight and it's the size that you want it, then all you're going to do is tie a knot in the back. That's why you left extra yarn um, when you first weaved it through. That way you could tie a knot with that extra piece of yarn and then the yarn attached to your yarn ball. Or um, This is actually just a regular piece of yarn that I cut off. And yeah, it's just a regular knot. And by the end of it, after you've made a couple of these, you're going to have a lot of extra yarn in the back and it's probably not going to look like super nice. But that's okay because you can either cut the extra yarn 
um, so it's not all over the place or you can just cover that cup with a piece of fabric but I don't think it really matters since it's going to be on the back of the cup and no one's going to see it. Anyway, you're just going to continue making X's like this throughout the cup. I think I only made about five and I like the way it looks, but you can make more, you can make less, you can make them bigger, you can make them smaller. It's totally up to you. And you can also make them aligned or just random. I chose to just make them randomly. And this is actually what I was talking about uh, when I was talking about the backside of the cup looking all crazy. This is all the extra yarn that I use to tie the knot. I'm just going to cut the excess string so I just leave the knots and then I'm going to sew in a piece of fabric on the back so it could cover everything and also you know provide me coverage and after you are finished with that and satisfied with the way it came out you are ready to rock it and represent America so remember if you had difficulties at trying to keep up with this video go ahead and watch any of my other older videos which are more beginner friendly and I also have that crocheting for beginners video as well. And yeah I really hope you enjoyed this video even though I didn't have a proper camera and was not able to show you as much as I normally do. Hopefully you're able to create this top. Have fun with it and have a great Independence Day. Have fun, be safe, and don't forget to click that red subscribe button so I can see you next time. Bye!